Well, today we're continuing in our series on the life of David from the Old Testament. I'm joined in the studio by Pastor Ross. Ross, today we're talking about friendship. And David is pretty famous for this before we get into that. Right. How do people today think about friendship? Well, it's so different, as we'll see as we unfold this, because mm -hmm. today, to be a friend just means that you have connected on social media. Right. I have friends on social media that I don't even know who they are. Right. Right. So, so we're talking about something that's a lot more depth of sharing life together yeah. in real ways. Yeah, and David's friendship with Jonathan is, is kind of famous. For people who know the Bible a mm -hmm. little bit, maybe they're already familiar with this, but why don't you just set it up for us? Yeah, well, David met Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan was the son of the current king. And David became a military hero, so he was invited into the household of that king, King Saul, Jonathan's father. And they hit it off immediately, became close friends right off the bat. And the story unfolds about how their friendship was tested and how it grew through a lot of different difficult situations. And so you're going to walk us through four things that we can learn from their friendship. The first one is this. Help us with this. You say great friendship requires great commitment. How does that play out in David and Jonathan's story? Right. Well, they started off with an immediate bond, mm -hmm. but and a lot of friendships could be shallow or there could be something in common that you have mm -hmm. with someone. But in their relationship, it went a lot farther than that. And right near, even the, near the very beginning, they pledged actually their friendship to each other. That seems a little bit weird for us today to mm -hmm. say, we're going to actually formalize our relationship and mm -hmm. say, I'm going to be loyal to you. You're going to be loyal to me. But they did this in that culture to say, you, you know where you stand. You can always count on me. I'm making a commitment that goes beyond just shared interests or kind of um, sort of shared personality. So what would that look like today for someone watching the video who says, I want that level of commitment in a friendship? How would they go? Should they sign a contract together? How would that work? <laughs> no, you just live it out. I think, I think the way that it, we would do that today is you would just live it out when Commitment gets tested and in a relationship as it grows, it usually grows through phases where there's a point in time where you're going to have to make a decision. Am I going to stick with this or am I going to bail on this? And so commitment gets tested over time in a relationship and you continue to be faithful and loyal and then the relationship grows. Okay, here's the second insight. You say great friendships involve great risk. What, what kind of risk was involved with David and Jonathan? Well, Saul the king began to be jealous of uh, David. And so the guy got went nuts and he decided he wanted to try to kill David, mm -hmm. get rid of him. Mm -hmm. And so Jonathan, if he's going to continue to be committed to David as a friend, mm -hmm. that put him at odds with his father. And so when David had to flee so that he would be safe from Saul, mm -hmm. Jonathan had to take risks to provide David with information about what was going on. Mm -hmm. And he actually went out to visit him and in the wilderness where he was hiding. And so he risked his relationship with his father. He risked uh, just his own safety even mm -hmm. to make that commitment to David in, to, for it to take action. What would that look like today? How, how do great friendships today involve risk? What would that look like in, in today's age? Right, I think I would clarify that the risk means that you're willing to take, make a sacrifice. Hmm. So we're talking about risking to make a sacrifice for someone. So when somebody's going through a difficult time, mm -hmm. um, am I willing to step in and take some of the burden of that? Mm -hmm. You know, am I willing to get out of my own comfort area in my life and say, I will shoulder that with you? You know, it might be, I'll meet a need. So it might be emotional risk. It might be a material risk mm -hmm. even to say, I'm willing to sacrifice for you. All right, this next point might be a little controversial depending on who's listening in on this video. You say this, great Friendships include God. Well, here's what we see in David and Jonathan's relationship. They had made this commitment to each other, and they renewed it. It was a couple of years since they'd even seen each other. So Jonathan went out where David was hiding and found him, and they renewed this friendship. But Jonathan specifically says, let's renew this before God. Mm. And so for them, in their relationship, God was a big part of it. They said, this is, the, this is the factor that we have in common that's the deepest thing. Mm -hmm. And so, in fact, Jonathan uh, encouraged David. He said, you know what? Hang in there. God has a plan for you. Keep trusting God. And so there's direct content in their relationship. So especially if you're a Christian, in a Christian friendship, mm -hmm. we don't want to just leave it at sports or common mm -hmm. interests. Mm -hmm. we, want to, we want to help encourage each other. Uh, to grow in our relationship with God. I can hear two objections to this. One, the Christian saying, well, are you saying I can't have a great friendship with someone who's not a Christian? And two, someone who's not a follower of Jesus yet might 
be a little offended and say, are you saying I can't have a great friendship? No, not at all. Because these other things that we're talking about today are also ingredients of a great friendship. Mm -hmm. But we're saying that there's another dimension mm -hmm. that if you've got it, if you've got a spiritual relationship or you both have a relationship with God, then that adds something just incredible to a relationship mm -hmm. that might already be good on other terms as well. All right, last thing you say this, and this is maybe the most obvious, so help us with this. Great friendships reflect great love. What, what, what would that look like in David and Jonathan's story? Okay, this comes out of the, when David found out that Jonathan had been killed in battle, he lamented deeply. Mm. And so he, he wept and grieved over Jonathan. So there's a sense in which um, great friendships are going to be those kind of things where I'll feel the loss. Mm. But, but as he laments, he says specifically, I, I love Jonathan. He says it out loud. I just, I loved him. And so, you know, it was the thing where this was so important to him that it wasn't just a relationship of convenience. It wasn't just, you know, common interest and so forth. There really was this deep commitment that led to a deep sense of loss. And that's what we mean by when we talk about friendships being an expression of love. And God's word says that there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And, it, you know, we, we know the story of Jesus. Why don't you end with this? And how Jesus ultimately showed his love and his affection for us, right, right as friends. Yeah, that's a great, a great illustration. Jesus said, you're no longer my friends. Mm. You're no longer my servants. Mm -hmm. I, I call you my friends now. Mm. And the Bible says that, um, that Jesus died on the cross to make us friends with God. And so we can have a depth of relationship with God because Jesus made a great commitment to us mm -hmm. and he made a great sacrifice and risk for us mm -hmm. because he loved us.